Welcome everybody. Hopefully you guys have gotten a little bit of a, a brain sorbet after looking at those basic terms that, I, that I've given you. Um, this lesson is a quick one. Um, basically, before we even jump into a lot of the music theory stuff, I know this question will come up. Um, do I need to read music or do I not need to read and write music? Um, my answer for this is no. I don't care about any of you learning how to read music or learn how to read and write music. Um, from a traditional point of view and uh, I will quickly go over why I think this and why you know music theory kind of like a lot of people are, are are encouraged to do this and why I discourage it so this is pretty much a course built towards you being practical with your music education um, if you are like basically just want to be me right um is how i'm training you i'm trying to train you how i would do things how i approach things um and a lot of formal education stuff doesn't help me and reading and writing music uh very much does not help me it does not help me day to day it's not a thing that i use actually never use i very 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 i won't even say rarely i just don't i just don't use it it's um it's a very useless skill for me um and very wasted uh, in, in my effort. If some of you are super, super like keen to learn how to read and write music, um, I would hundred percent Google something that will teach you. I'm sure there's a million courses out there that will show you how to do it, but you will not do that here. Um, I don't want you guys to do it. So if you're here and you want to learn music theory, uh, do not learn how to read and write music. It is actually, it's actually just a waste, waste of your time currently my two cents. And I'm sorry if this like hurts people's feelings, but We'll quickly go into uh, why people got into reading and writing uh, formal music. So first things first, it is the way that you distributed music, period. You couldn't do it without writing your music. You couldn't distribute music until like the 1900s once they started creating recording devices that allowed you to record music. And then eventually audio became a medium for communicating music. And then now we live in an era where video is amazing. Now... Back in the day, that's what they had to do. If you were a famous or you were trying to be, you were an up and comer composer or a piano player or whatever, you had to write out your music and then you had to write on multiple um, manuscripts and then you would sell those manuscripts and that's how you, you would make money. It's like selling CDs basically. Um, and that's how they used to do it and that's how you used to make money. Now, that is one area, like that's why it existed. Like first step, like it's how you made money as a musician back in the day. Um, the second big reason why is if you are communicating with many instruments, so this comes from the context of an orchestra, um, you need everyone to work together. So you would learn how to write music for each instrument and then you would arrange all the music for like a master, like conductor. And then um, you would basically be able to get everyone in sync. They would all know where they are. You could be like, all right, measure 10. Uh, bar three, let, uh, beat three, let's go. And then everyone would jump in at that point and they would know what they're doing. You could speed up the level of communication. That's not something I don't, I don't, unless any of you guys are into orchestra playing or you're trying to conduct an orchestra or compose for an orchestra, um, which majority of you are not, um, we are not going to talk about that. So third reason why that you, you would have to learn uh, how to read is if you were doing formal education. So at Berkeley, I had to read and write music because, uh, that is how they assessed us. Like if I took an arranging class, I'd had to learn how to write the music for a big band. So I had to arrange the music. Um, it was the easiest way for the professors to uh, basically give us grades is essentially all it was for. Um, it wasn't very handy, um, but it, it got me grades. So I had to learn it. That's what I had to do. Uh, and this is also going to help for like school music. You might have to learn it for school music. Or if you were doing like grades, like there's the Trinity exams in the UK and things like that, where people would do like graded exams, uh, allows everyone to do the exact same thing and be marked on the exact same thing. Um, I'm here to help create musicians, not create like robots who know how to play um, a couple of notes um, and what the uh, Trinity exam tells you what to do. So we're not doing that. Um, and then also the last reason you would need to learn how to read uh, and write music is if you're a session musician, which if you're watching this video, um, you're hundred percent not, because uh, <laughs> this is for beginners. And if you're a, a session musician watching this thing and you are looking at us, uh, leave. Uh, so I'm not going to waste your time right now. Um, so session musicians typically have to sight read. Um, they have to be able to read music very quickly. 
in case they're doing a recording session or they're doing a performance. And so being able to read allows them to quickly jump in, read the music, know what's going on, and then play it. And they can engage in the music that very fast. So um, typically that's not a lot of use, so don't worry about it. Uh, so when I say you don't need it, there's a huge reasons before this because we kind of have like four, I have like four big reasons why um, you don't really need it. It's because right now we have YouTube. You're watching this video on YouTube. Uh, you're watching this video on school. It's being hosted through YouTube. So you have the most amazing medium that's ever happened in the history of music towards education. Uh, you can immediately watch how people play things. You can listen to how they play things. You can slow things down. You can do so many cool things with YouTube. And it's just like, it's just broken. It's the most amazing thing that's ever happened, um, especially towards education. So uh, I absolutely love it. Um, and that's one big reason why you don't need it. The second thing, we have guitar tabs. I say don't learn how to read music. That's because as guitarists, we have access to a thing called tabs, which is a really, really low barrier to entry on learning how to see and read music and do all those kinds of things. And in our beginner course, we do talk about how there's already a, a session on how to read tabs. So you should already basically know how to read tabs if you're at this point here in the theory course. Um, the third thing is we have audio recordings. You can just listen to audio recordings and that's going to lead to the fourth point is you can build your ear. So through listening, through recording, uh, recordings or watching YouTube videos and learning to train your ear at the same time, you will build, build huge skills in musicianship. And that's what reading doesn't do. Reading creates like a, like you're learning how to read and then you have to like understand reading and it creates like a barrier be between you and the music if you're not very good at it. So I have seen absolutely huge growth in people who don't read music and they typically were tr had to be like, they had guitar teachers or they had um, music teachers that were like, you need to read the music. This is the only way. And they were such clever students and they were such good players, but because they were boxed into the reading, they had to learn how to read and then they were losing the their created creativity and they were losing that the fuel that was like just holding them back. And as soon as we took the reading out of it and they started working by ear, they started watching videos, they started really getting into music. Um, they just skyrocket, skyrocketed in their progress. So um, if the question is, do you need to read music? No, you do not need to read music if you are looking to become a professional in the space of classical music uh, and jazz music and you're going to arrange for orchestras and you want to be a session player and you want to play in orchestras or big bands and things like that, you will need to learn how to read music. It will definitely be an asset. But if you are not trying to do that um, and you just want to sing and play songs, you don't need that. Uh, you'll just need to learn the theory that I'm going to show you and you're going to absolutely slay. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.